in this section we'll we'll implement and verify the hsrp lab where i got two physical gateways here r1 and r3 which are going to act in my physical gateways and then we have a pc in the lan it's not exactly a pc i'm going to use a router which is going to act as my physical computer in the lan and we'll try to verify the reachability to the internet routes so let's get started with this uh, the first step what we are going to do is we are going to assign the basic ip addressing on the routers as per the diagram for and test the connectivity and then what we are going to do is we are going to configure the default route on router 1 and router 3 and then static route on the router 2 in order to provide the reachability so we are going to assume we don't have a real internet connection here but we are going to assume our topology as having some internet routes so the first thing i'm going to assign the ip addresses as per the diagram so already i have this ip addresses so design your topology exactly with a similar type of connectivity and on the router 1 i'm going to configure the default route pointing towards the isp and on the router 3 i'm going to use the default route both the sides because from our network to internet we always configure the default route and this router 2 which is acting as my isp router on that router we are going to configure a static route providing the reachability to the LAN interface which is using 192.168.1 network on both the sides so we are going to configure the static reachability on both the sides so either you can do this or you can simply go to all the routers and you can enable simply EHRP or any other protocol for testing purpose so I'm not going with that dynamic protocols I'm trying to simulate the similar kind of configurations what we'll find when you are connecting to internet using the default routes so let's try to get into that and implement so I already have the IP addressing configured in my devices let us first verify that I'll go to router 1 which is my primary gateway one of the prime one of the gateway if I verify show IP interface brief I'm going to use f0 by 0 192.168.1.100 is my primary gateway here and if I try to go to router 3 which is my another gateway is having the IP address of 192.168.1.200 so these two must be on the same network at the same time they should be uh, they should have the connectivity between the gateways so let's try to test because if there is no connectivity between the gateways then you cannot expect the SHSRP or any other redundancy protocols to work properly now similar way I'm going to test the connectivity to my host in the LAN which is 192.168.1.1 which is the my PC so it's actually a router I'm going to use uh, my router as PC here so it is already assigned with this address now from the PC I'm able to access both the gateways so which means the LAN connectivity is working fine as per my diagram so I did only the basic connectivity and on the router 2 uh, I have the WAN connectivity anyway it's it's perfect so if you try to verify this is something as per our default topology I have built I can ping to 1.1.1.1 on the router 2 which is acting as my ISP and then I'm also able to ping to 2.2.2.2 which is router 3 so everything is perfect and here you can see 12 dot networks on the router 2 will be acting as my loopbacks the loopbacks which are acting as my internet routes I don't have a real internet I'm going to assume those networks as my internet routes next thing we'll see is let's try to configure the default route on both the gateways so I'll go to router 1 and I'll say IP route and then simply 0000, 000 to provide the reachability to internet I'm going to say 2.2.1.1.1.2 so anyway in the production network you also have some NAT configured on that I'm not going to, I'm not getting into that NAT configurations here so IP route 0000 000 and the gateway is 2.2.2.1 now from from both the physical gateways I'm going to provide the reachability to the internet routes by using the default route and from router 2 I'm getting into route IP route and I'm going to say 192.168.1. network if any traffic coming from 1. network if it is coming from this side the next stop address is 1.1.1.1 so generally the service forwarder will add a static route to your uh, public IP we use in the LAN but here we're not doing translation so I'm going to direct map the static route for the LAN interface so this is going to ensure that we have reachability from our LAN which is my uh, from router 1 if I try to verify if I try to ping 
12.001 which is my internet routes you can see i'm able to access those routes even though there is no route in my routing table because i have a default route now similar way you can also access those internet routes from the both the gateways so this this is going to provide me ensure that you have reachability from the gateway to the internet gateway to the internet now if you want to provide reachability from a physical computer in the LAN, what, what we need to do? So we need to go to this device and then we have to say the IP address is 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask is slash 24.255.255.255.0 and then we have to define the default gateway. But the question is default gateway whether I have to define this gateway or this gateway. So if I define the gateway as 192.168.1.100 uh, let us see so all the traffic will go via this gateway and if i define the gateway as 192.162.1.200 all the traffic will go via like this which i really don't want i don't want to use any of the physical gateways instead i'm going to configure uh, a virtual gateway which will be 192.168.1.150 will be my virtual gateway which is a combination of these two and i'm going to configure this by using hsrp protocol initially so let's let us try to get into some hsrp configuration so before that uh, i'll show you some some basic things like if you're testing this on a gns program or if you don't have a physical computer so probably you can try a router to act as a pc here now i'll show you those configurations so by default router 4 is a router router 4 is a router right so any packet comes to the router if you if you just go and check show IP route by default it has some routes now here if I try to ping 12.001 you will not see the reachability it will be established because the reason is this is just a router so now what you can do is you can either add a default route on router 1 so you can simply add a default route IP route 0000 also or you can just make a router to act as a PC by using no IP routing so when you say no IP routing means automatically routing table will be disabled and then I'm going to say IP default gateway default gateway I'm going to say any one of the gateway let's say I'll, I'll give 192.168.1.100 as a my gateway anyway I'll change it to virtual gateway later on so now if I if I verify my routing table I don't have a route so now any traffic comes it will automatically simply forward this to the gateway let's say now I will try to ping 12.001 which is now this is just behaving just like an host in my network so if you see here I'm able to ping so if I try to trace 12.001 now this is my PC whenever this PC realizes that this is uh, it belongs to 192.168.1.1 1 network and the destination address is on a different subnet it's going to simply forward the packet to the gateway that is router 1 and router 1 simply forward the packet to ISP now this way we are going to test our lab here now what I'll do is I'll change the gateway address no IP default gateway which I configured as 192.168.1.100 I'll remove that and then I'm going to configure it as 192.168.1.50 so I'm going to change it as uh, 1.50 okay so I, I just removed it okay so IP default gateway okay 1.50 so now if I try to verify the same like we did in the last time now I'm not able to ping because the reason is very simple you don't have 192.168.1.50 as a gateway but which means we didn't configure HSRP still now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let's say I'll stop the ping messages and then I'll I'll give you repeat continuous pings okay so let's let's try to uh, give some continuous ping messages so that for testing purpose so we'll keep this on hold we'll we'll wait and we'll verify as of now we are not going to communicate so let's try to configure HSRP on router 1 and router 2 with a virtual IP address 192.168.1.50 let's say I'm going to interface word so now to configure any of the hsrp commands you need to go to the interface which is connecting to the lan remember that so all the hsrp configurations comes on the interface mode and that to the interface which is connecting to your lan interface now in my scenario it is f0 by 0 so i have to go to f0 by 0 
and all the commands relating to HSRP starts with standby. So if you remember standby, now you can always use question mark to find the next possible options. Now in that, the first option is the group number. Now I'm going to, I need to define mandatory a group number, any number I can use. Let's say I'm going to use one, three, any number you can use. And then after that, let's say I'll, I'll make it simple as one group number. And then the first option you have to say is IP. Now what is the virtual IP we decided? So what is IP we decided? 192.168.1.150. So these two gateways at the same time the virtual IP must be on the same network in order to have a proper HSRP functioning. So if there are in different networks, they will not work. Done. So I just configured it. Now this is only one command we need to do. And the same command I'm going to do on the other gateway that is what is my other gateway interface at zero by zero standby group number one and this group number must match on both the sides remember that group number has to be same and the IP address also must be same on both the gateways so the same command I'm going to configure on the second gateway that is my router three now once I finish now you can see ping starts working I can see the communication starts here why? Because now we have a virtual gateway configured on both the gateways. So you can see some messages here. Group one uh, states speak to standby and then now it's active. Now there's only one command we need to do. Now if I verify show standby, there's a command called show standby brief or you can use show standby. Now you can, here you can see a lot of options. Now here active order is local and standby is this, this is all the things. So, but uh, in, in some cases, let's say, you want to ensure that uh, your specific router as a gateway, it should take. So in my case, uh, it's going to take router one as a gateway because I configured it primarily. So what I want to do is I want to ensure that this router must be my primary gateway and this has to be my secondary gateway. So the default priority value will be always 100. So I can change the priority value of 150 on the other side in order to ensure that my primary gateway always will be router one. So to do that, there are some more commands we need to add. So we just added only one command, if you remember. And what is the command we did? Show run interface F0 by zero. We just added this command. This is the only one command minimum you require to for HSRP to work. But we can add some extra commands uh, like optimization or some of the best practices we can say. So I'm going to say specifically, if you want to make any specific router as a, any, as a primary gateway, then we can change the priority value to some number, anything higher than 100 works here. So I'm going to make it as 120. Okay, so if I'm not going to do anything on the router three, which means it is going to take the default 100 and router one is going to take 120. So now if I verify show standby, now here you can see, the timer state is active and the virtual IP address is this. I'll come to this output more in detail in the next once we figure out all the commands. And you can see uh, preemption is disabled. I'll come to this option again. Active router is local. Standby is 200 and the priority value of the standby is 100. And my priority value is how much? 120, which is configured. Okay. Now your router 4 will be able to access that. It's working fine, you can see. Because through they are going through virtual gateways. So if you try to trace 12.001, the trace package will show you that the traffic is going via primary gateway. Because uh, as per the primary gateway, because when you tr trace, it's not going to show you as 192.168.1.50. It's still going to show you as 1.100, which is my router 1. Now, next thing, we'll do some more commands. Let's say, Let's try to understand the behavior of preempt. By default, these HSRP elections are non preemptive. So non preemptive means uh, it's like uh, it's like similar to OSP of DRBT elections, where if router one is the primary gateway and router two is your secondary gateway. And if the primary gateway fails, the secondary gateway will become primary and it will start actively sending the traffic. But let's say if primary gateway comes up back again, still, this one will be the secondary gateway. This film will be a primary gateway. 
as long as this is running it will be primary and if this goes down then only it can become a primary so this is what we call as by default non preemptive type of election similar to your dr pdr but this is something what i have not recommended because let's say if this link is your 110 mbps link and this is your 2 mbps link and due to some reason let's say you you try to restart your device because you made some changes to the routers and you restarted the device and by the time you restart as the convergence time is just 10 seconds so it's this one has become the primary now all the traffic from the LAN is go using the secondary gateway and this primary gateway is uh, which is 10 mbps link we are not at all using it because of uh, the link goes down so what what we can do is anyway it is by default non preemptive but we can change him to preemptive behavior saying that this is your primary gateway if that fails this will take up the role of primary but if it comes back again you have to give back the role of primary forwarding traffic so that is something what uh, we can do by adding one command which is recommended 